Namaste, everyone. Uh, we're going to move through a practice today, a power practice, but not in the traditional or more, more recently traditional sense of power. Uh, I think now power is thought to be very fast moving, uh, lots of chaturangas, um, quantity over quality, if you will. Uh, today we're going to move a little bit slower. There's definitely going to be vinyasa opportunities within the practice. But a lot of the poses we're going to step back into from, say, chair pose or uh, just from the top of our mats. And we're going to hold the poses a little bit longer. So today, instead of power meaning fast or speed, we're, it's going to equal more uh, uh, grounded stability, that kind of thing. So we're going to start standing at the top of our mats. We're going to move through three rounds of sun A. So bring your feet a little bit apart. Not quite touching, not quite hip width apart, somewhere in between that. And then prayer hands at the heart. Inhale, we're going to sweep those arms up overhead. First one, we'll move through pretty slow. Exhale, fold out over the legs, releasing those hands, bend the knees if you need to. Halfway up on that inhale. On the exhale as you fold, we're going to take it back to our plank pose. If you're a jumper, feel free. I gave up jumping. Then on the exhale, either to the belly for cobra or maybe into your chaturanga up dog then exhale back to down dog go for four breaths this first go around if you need to move around in down dog by all means feel free but just take a notice of it if you're doing that because you need to or if it's just a fidgety habit then looking up at the top of your mat lift up your heels step hop or float to the top halfway up on the inhale exhale fold Prayer hands at the heart. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to the chest. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, fold out over the legs. Halfway up on that inhale. Exhale, fold your way back. Inhale at the top of this plank. Exhale, down your way. Inhale, into your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths this time in down dog. Looking up, lift up your heels, several steps, couple of hops, one big jump to get you to the top, halfway up, fold over, prayer hands at the heart, inhale all the way up, exhale hands to the chest. Let's do it one more time, we'll pick up the pace a little bit on this one, inhale up, exhale over, free up those hands, halfway up on the in-breath, exhale back to plank and down your way into that back bend exhale back to down dog three breaths from this point on when we get to this down dog good then looking up lift up your heels step up or float to the top halfway up exhale fold prayer hands at the heart inhale all the way up exhale to the heart we're going to keep that rhythm of sun A's, but we're going to add some standing poses into it. Inhale, taking the arms overhead. Exhale, fold out over the legs. Halfway up on the in-breath. Exhale, fold. Take it back through your vinyasa. Back to downward facing dog. This time, drawing the right knee towards the chest, coming forward into a little bit of shape of plank. Right foot forward between the hands. Left knee lifted if you can. Up into your high lunge. So as you step down into this right foot, think about pressing that left hip forward while at the same time drawing these front ribs into those back ribs. Then hands to the mat. If you wanna work a little easier, just go right to down dog. Otherwise, plank pose for a breath or two, then dog, or come down, go through your back bend Find your way back to downward facing dog. Left knee towards the chest to bring that left foot forward. Up into our high lunge. Those same ideas with the hips and those front ribs, but also trying to maintain a connection between big toe of front foot and pinky toe of back foot. Then hands to your mat. Take it back to that plank, then dog or through the vinyasa, or straight to down dog. Then we'll look forward, lift up our heels, 
step, hop, or float to the top. Halfway up, exhale, fold. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good, we're gonna add another pose into there. Inhale up, exhale over. Halfway up on that in breath. Exhale, fold, take it back your way. Through your vinyasa. Good. Right knee to chest to bring that right foot forward. Up into that high lunge. Next exhale, turn that left heel down. Let's peel this open into warrior two. And as you settle into warrior two, think about as you step down into this right foot, the outer right knee and outer right hip are tracking towards that pinky toe side of your foot. Cartwheel the hands to the floor. Plank maybe for a breath or two, maybe through vinyasa. Finding your way back to down dog. Then we'll draw that left knee to the chest, left foot forward, up into that high lunge. Turn that right heel down, turn this into warrior two. Draw those shoulder blades onto the back. And then we'll cartwheel those hands to the floor, maybe to down dog, maybe through the vinyasa, eventually back to down dog. One more breath here. Then look forward, lift up your heels, step, hop, or float. Halfway up on the in-breath, exhale, fold. Reach up on the inhale, exhale, hands to the chest. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, dive out. Find a little lift on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Take it back to that plank pose. Coming through, vinyasa. Down dog. Right knee to chest, right foot forward. Up into your high lunge. Into your warrior two. This pose will happen again. Left hand, left leg, reverse that warrior, a little peaceful warrior. Cartwheel the hands to the floor. Remember your choices. No vinyasa, half vinyasa, or the full vinyasa. Back to down dog. Left knee to the chest. Left foot forward. Up into your high lunge into your warrior two, into your reverse warrior, then hands to the mat, take it back to dog or vinyasa. Finding your way back to down dog, looking forward, lifting up your heels, step, hop, or float, Halfway up on the inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good. Now we're gonna move into some standing poses from chair pose next. Now for chair pose, feet together is the common position that sometimes does not agree with outer hips or low back. So if that's the case, a little bit of space, no more than hip width apart with your feet. And you're gonna to need to engage a little bit of core energy here. So feet together or a little bit apart, bend the knees, sink the hips. As your hips come down, let that booty back up, but then curl that tailbone under so you get that crunch out of the low back. Keep your chest and shoulders somewhat lifted, arms up alongside the head. Five breaths in this chair pose. Again, activate this low belly energy. That's gonna help you in this step back. Then your hands can come to the hips or to the heart. You can certainly keep them overhead. A little bit of weight into that right foot. We're gonna pick up that left foot, step it back about three feet, finding our shape of warrior one. So as we lunge into right hip, we draw left hip forward. Arms up alongside the head, maybe looking up, maybe looking straight ahead. Wiggle through these shoulders. Take another breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna turn this into warrior two. So as you rotate 
to that long side of your mat, let that left foot slide about a step back. Good. Two more breaths here. And we're going to straighten that right leg, reach forward to that right hand, right hand to right shin, maybe right ankle, reach up through that left hand for triangle pose. Try to keep that long spine, try to keep that belly engaged. Two more breaths here. Then we're going to lunge into that right leg, come back up into warrior two, just for three breaths. Then we're going to reach forward to that right arm, right hand coming down inside that right foot. You can certainly stop with the elbow on the knee, left arm up alongside your head. As you reach for this left arm, draw back that left shoulder, plug into the pinky toe of that back foot. Three more breaths here. And then sweep back up, straighten that right leg, hands to your hips, pivot so the toes are facing the long side of your mat. Roll your shoulders back and down, draw those elbows back. Tip your chin up a little bit, exhale, hinge forward. Keep your hands where they are, fold over, chin towards the chest. If this makes you feel a little unstable with the hands on the hips, by all means, bring fingertips to the floor or make a little picture frame of your arms around your head. Two more breaths. Then hands back to the hips, lengthen your spine, engage the belly. Inhale, bring the torso up. We're going to turn that right foot to the short edge of your mat. As you turn this left foot in, you're going to turn in the direction of these right uh, toes. Arms are going to come behind you, maybe holding on to opposite elbow bicep. If you can do the prayer hand behind the heart, feel free. Then you can say you did something spiritual today. Tip up your chin. Exhale, let's hinge out. Hollow up that belly. Fold over that right leg. And weirdly, this does feel a little bit like balance. So you could bring fingertips to the floor or hands to the shins if you feel like you're going to topple over here. Let's do two more breaths. Then find that length in the spine. We're going to bring the torso up. Hands through your hips. Lunge into this right leg. Pivot onto the ball of that back foot, then left foot up to the right foot, back to chair pose. Let's find five breaths in this chair pose. Again, you can have the hands at the hips, the heart, or overhead. And then those hands to the hips, a little weight into that left foot. Step that right foot back. Find your shape of warrior one on this side. Remember you're plugging into that front big toe and that back pinky toe to feel that grounded feeling. Exhale, peel open into your warrior two. It's a little shimmy with that back foot. Then we'll reach forward to that left hand, left hand coming down, right arm up alongside the head, roll that hip and thigh under. Two more breaths. And reach up into warrior two. As you realize, we didn't do our triangle. <laughs> we'll do it now. Left hand to left leg. Reach up through that right arm. I think because I dislike side angle more than I like triangle, I want to get it out of the way. All right, back up into warrior two. 
straighten that leg, pivot so you're facing long side of your mat again, hands on your hips, roll those shoulders back and down, hinge forward, again you can keep your hands where they are, if you need to bring hands to the floor feel free, or just make that little picture frame. Two more breaths here. Then your hands to your hips, long spine, torso up. Turn left toes to the top of your mat. As you turn those right toes in, bring the rest of you to face that uh, left foot. Arms behind you, holding on to elbow or forearm or those prayer hands. Lean through the spine. Exhale, hinge forward. Pyramid pose. Again, fingertips can always come to the floor or hands to the shins. Your right, or sorry, your left hip is going to want to run forward and your right hip back. So switch those roles. Left hip back, right hip forward. Then as we press our feet into the mat, inhale, torso is going to come up, hands to your hips, lunge into that left leg. Pivot onto the ball of that back foot. Right foot up to meet your left foot. Chair pose. Two breaths. Then exhale, fold over the legs as they straighten. Halfway up on that inhale. Exhale, fold, take it back your way. Come through your vinyasa. To downward facing dog. Then look up, lift up your heels, step, hop, or float to the top. Halfway up on that inhale, exhale, bend those knees, sink those hips, chair pose, five breaths. We're gonna move through some balance poses this time from chair pose. I heard a big collective groan. So hands to your hips. Now, as we stand up, lift up that left knee. Then you want to find your place of drishti, something that's not moving. Then we're going to hinge from the hip, press that left foot back, turning this into warrior three. Try to keep your hips level with your mat. Two more breaths. Then we're going to bring that right hand down left hand to left hip let yourself peel open here maybe reach that left hand up for Ardha Chandrasan half moon two more breaths both hands to the floor standing split for three breaths hands could stay on the mat or you could take a hold of ankle or shin And we're going to let that left foot come down next to the right foot. Come up about halfway. Left hand directly under your face, maybe to a block. Right hand to your right hip. Bend this left knee. Keep that heel on the floor. Take a twist to the right. Press down into that right foot. Your right hand could stay on the hip. You could take that hand up into the sky. Then exhale, let go of the twist. Straighten both legs, come up about halfway. You guessed it, bend the knees, sink those hips, chair pose. Then we're gonna shift weight into that left foot. Again, hands can come to these hips. And as you stand up, lift up that right knee, find your bearings here. Then from the hips, push that right foot back Level the hips to your mat for warrior three. You may have a chair nearby sometimes. Two more breaths. Then left hand to the floor. Open up that right hip. Maybe reach up that right hand. Ardha Chandrasan half moon.
One more breath. Hands to the floor. Moment of a standing splint. Good hip stabilizer, this pose. Then we'll bring that right foot next to the left foot. Come up about halfway. Right hand directly under your face. Left hand to the left hip. Bend your right knee, keep that heel grounded. Take that twist to the left. Maybe reach up that left hand. And then we're gonna let go of that pose. Last time, bend the knees, sink the hips, chair pose. And then inhale, stand up, hands to your hips. Roll your shoulders back and down. Deep breath in, big open mouth exhale. We're gonna do one more balance pose, a Vrikshasan tree pose. So shift weight into that right foot. Now as you lift up that left knee, let that leg come out to the side. And you're gonna place that left foot anywhere above or below that right knee. Again, find that place of drishti, that place to land your gaze. Draw this outer left hip and knee to the wall behind you. Three breaths. Then we'll draw that knee forward, left foot to the floor. Might shake out that right leg a little bit. Weight into the left foot. As that right knee comes up, go ahead and open it out to the side. Again, right foot above or below, inside of left leg, above or below the knee. Hands to the heart. Good. Keep some space between those toes of the standing foot. Try not to turn this Try not to turn your toes into roots in tree pose. Two more breaths. Good. And we'll bring that knee around to the front. Right foot to the floor. Shake it out a little bit. Feet about hip width apart. Peace fingers out of your hands. Hinge from those hips. See if you can hook those peace fingers around the big toes. Come up about halfway. Lengthen through your spine. Exhale as you fold over, take those elbows out to the side, chin to your chest, press down into the ball and heel of each foot, and feel like those sit bones are pressing up. If you can't hold onto these toes, take a hold of opposite elbow or bicep. Two more breaths. And we're going to release. That grip, take your feet a little bit wider, maybe wider than your shoulders. Turn your toes out a bit. Bend those knees, sink those hips, coming down into Malasan. Nice little yoga squat here. Might be some snap crackles and pops along the way. Prayer hands at the heart, using those triceps to press into those inner knees. Let's do three more breaths here. Bend your fingers to the floor. Groaning helps to get those hips back up. Feet about hip width apart. This time see if you can slide the palms of the hands up underneath the soles of your feet. More than welcome to go back to holding onto the big toes or holding onto opposite elbow bicep. Then we're going to release the hands, reorient yourself on your mat to downward facing dog. Last call for vinyasa here. Find your back bend. Back to down dog. Then we're going to bring that right knee up behind your right wrist and bring down that left leg for pigeon pose. So scoot the left leg back, but again, keep drawing that left hip forward. Your hips in pigeon pose look like they kind of look uh, when you do uh, warrior one or crescent lunges. So start on the fingertips here. Find a little bit of a back bend. Press the pinky edge of your right foot into your mat. 
press the top of your left foot into the mat. This is going to engage these IT bands and outer hip and outer glute muscles. Just for one more breath like this. Then we're going to come down to the left forearm elbow. Let it kind of run parallel to the short edge of your mat. Right hand to your right leg. Take a little bit of a twist towards the right. You could stay in this shape or bring up that left foot. Reach back with your right hand. If you can go over the tops of the toes, go for it. Otherwise, go for big toe or pinky toe side. Then when you release that foot, try not to let it smack the floor. Come to both forearms, elbows. Maybe this is gonna be the shape of your pigeon. I wanna get my timer here. Or maybe you come down and rest your forehead there. We're gonna hold this for another minute. If you need to exhale out of the mouth here, let that happen. You got about 30 more seconds here. up to the hands. You're going to come to this right hip. Be mindful of stuff on your left side here. You're going to swing that left leg around and either stack that left shin on top of the right shin or cross the left shin in front of the right. Bring the hands behind you a bit to tip you forward into double pigeon. I mean one pigeon is great. The double's got to be twice as good, right? You can keep the back straight. You can round into it. Yogi's choice here. Check in that you're not clenching glutes here, trying to hover off your mat, unless you actually have the superpower of hovering. About 30 more seconds. The birds are singing outside because I see us doing pigeon pose. And I think we are one of them now. Pigeons in the nest. Although we don't actually have pigeons in South Carolina. I don't think. And then we're going to bring the torso up. You can either make your way to down dog or just lean to that left side and wiggle into the shape of pigeon with that left knee up behind your wrist. So again, start up on the fingertips, top of that right foot pressing into your mat, pinky edge of your left foot pressing into your mat. And then we're gonna come down to the hands, bring that right forearm elbow to the floor, left hand to that left knee, taking your little bit of a twist to the left. Again, you could stay here, you'd lead a very full life, or bend that right knee Take your hands over the tops of the toes. If you could do this with this arm straight and upright, you could play with that as well. And then again, when we let go of that foot, let it float down like a leaf, not a handle. Come to forearms, elbows. If you can make it to your chest, go for it. Again, we've got a minute here. Again, exhaling out of the mouth will help you trigger a little bit of your relaxation response. So if you find that you're really uh, kind of holding on here, consider doing that. You got about 30 more seconds. more seconds here. I 
And then we're gonna walk up to the hands, come to that left hip. Again, look out for stuff on your right. Swing that right leg around, either crossing that right shin in front of the left or stacking right shin on top. Flex both feet as you just take a, maybe a little bow forward. You don't have to go into that full rounding forward here. maybe 30 seconds here. Last 10 seconds. torso up, bring your right foot to the floor, followed by your left foot, maybe scoot the hips up a little bit. We're going to roll down onto our back, we're going to do a little bit of some, some front core stuff and a back bend. So bring your hands behind you, one on top of the other behind your head. Feet about hip width apart, inhale to the count of four, exhale to the count of four as you pull that belly in. Call it uh, old jean uh, banda here. Inhale to the count of four. Exhale, pull that belly in as you exhale to the count of four. It's that, that banda you're engaged to get on a pair of jeans you found in the back of your closet. Now this time as you inhale, deflate that belly. On the exhale, as you pull the belly in, you're gonna lift the head and shoulders again to the count of four. So inhale, down to four. Maybe just be a half an inch off the mat. Exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up, do two more like that, and up, one more, and up. Now this time when you come down, bring the arms alongside your palms, pressing into your mat. Lift up your legs so your calves are kind of parallel to the floor, and bring the ankles and knees together. Now we're gonna do some lower curls here. So you're gonna draw the knees a little bit toward you. Then that same action that we did of pulling in the belly is gonna just lift our tailbone off the mat. So when you bring it down, take the knees back out. So inhale as you draw the knees in. Exhale, curl that tailbone off the mat. So inhale, out. Exhale, in and up. Good. Inhale out. Exhale, draw it in. I feel like three more might be a good call. And you hear that I'm really doing it because it's making my furniture shake. One more. Good. Now this time take your legs straight up. Now you're gonna lift up that tailbone. It's probably not gonna come up as high because you're not gonna be using any momentum of the legs. You're just gonna be using the action of the lower abs. So exhale. It's like you're stepping your feet up onto the ceiling. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Good. Keep going. Exhale. Inhale. Three more. Good. Two more. Now keep those legs up. Take your arms straight up, palms facing each other. Take a deep breath in, exhale, lift up head and shoulders. Take another deep breath in, exhale, lift the tailbone off the floor. It's like a little letter U, and we're just gonna hold it. So this is a static move. Two more breaths. Then bring it all down. Hug those knees in, maybe a little bit of rocking side to side here. Feet to your mat, knees and feet about hip width apart. Try to just brush your heels with your fingertips. We're gonna go into bridge pose. First one we're gonna do kind of small, so just keep the arms alongside you, palms pressing into your mat. Tuck your shoulder blades a little bit onto the back. 
curl your tailbone off the mat, start to press up the hips. Then when your knees and your hips are kind of at a little bit of an angle, pause there. Keep curling under that tailbone. That's how you get that little quad stretch and bridge pose. Two more breaths. Then exhale, let's bring it down. Fight the urge of hugging the knees into the chest. Second round, we're gonna go up maybe a little higher with the hips and do the interlace of the fingers. If that's something that doesn't sit well in your shoulders, either stay with the hands on your mat or you can even hold on to the edges. Take an inhale, wiggle in those shoulder blades. Exhale, press up those hips. When you get to the top, walk the shoulder blades a little closer, walk the arms a little closer. Curl the tailbone under, press the hips up a little more, interlace the fingers, roll front of shoulders under a bit, dip your chin up, ground on your inhale, press up on your exhale. Two more breaths. Then when you release your hands, walk those shoulder blades apart from each other. Then come down vertebrae by vertebrae. Again, fight the urge of hugging in those knees just yet. This is a big heart opener as well. So sometimes, you know, we build that little sort of shell around us. So this is to crack open that shell. We're gonna do it a third time. You can do bridge, that small version, or the hands under you. Or if you wanna go for wheel, bring your hands alongside your head. I'm going for bridge. Now, as we go for that, and we're opening up this heart center. When you get up to the top of that pose, just imagine that you're shooting out like rainbows and sunshine and daisies to the people you love, especially the people you don't love. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Let's press it up into wheel or bridge. Open up that heart center. Send it all out. Nothing but love. And for the last two breaths, let love pour into that heart center. Release the hands. Come down from your wheel or your bridge. Pause here, flat on your back for just like two breaths. And let's hug those knees in like we're saying hi to an old friend. All right, so we're gonna go upside down for a bit. You have two options here. You could do Viparita Karani, uh, which is a more friendly inversion for your neck or shoulders if you have some issues there. You could do this flat on your mat or with a block. If you have a block, just lift up your hips, put the block up underneath your low back and your tailbone. Otherwise, you can just take your legs straight up like this. If you wanna go for shoulder stand, walk the shoulders a little bit towards each other. Press your hands into your mat so you can Kick the knees to the forehead. Then wiggle your shoulders in, walk your elbows in. Then we'll take the legs overhead, and then eventually at about a 90 degree angle. If you're feeling stress in neck or shoulders in this, come out, go into Viparita Karani. If your heartbeat really starts to accelerate, step out. We're going to go for 10 more breaths here. more breaths. Then knees to the forehead of your shoulder stand, chest if you're not. Bring your hands to your mat. Use the core to control that rolling down. Knees bent, feet to your mat. Big breath in big breath out. Then you're going to walk your ankles and your knees together. Roll to the left, 
Slide the right hand up underneath the bottom of that right hip. Same with the left hand. Then we're going to extend the legs out. Press into your forearms. Arch your chest up towards the ceiling. Rest your forehead on the mat. Fish pose. You could do this with knees bent, feet on the floor. Then draw the belly in. Press the elbows into the floor. Lift the head. Lay back down. Free up those hands. Feet to the floor. Bring the hands behind the head, one on top of the other. Chin to your chest. Wrap the elbows around your head. Let the weight of your head drop into your hands or the back of the neck. Then we'll bring the head down. Hug in that right knee. Send up that left leg. We're going to guide this right knee over to the left. I like to bump my left hip back once I bring it over. Maybe you reach that right arm. Maybe it's up alongside the head or down alongside your torso. And come back to the center. And switch it. Hugging that left knee. Send up that right leg. Oops. Try not to kick stuff. <laughs> Take that left leg over to the right. Now on this side, my shoulder gets a little angry. So I tend to bring my left arm down alongside me, like I would in Shavasana. Then roll back to the center. Hug both knees in. Do a little bit of rocking side to side here. And then from here, extend out your legs, drop down your arms, let your eyes close. Take a deep breath, fill up your belly, fill up your ribs, fill up your chest. As you open the mouth to exhale, Empty the chest, the ribs, and the belly. Again, inhale into belly, ribs, chest. Exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Wiggle out your fingers and your toes. Now this time as you inhale, flex your feet, make fist, shrug up your shoulders, squeeze your eyes shut, purse your lips. As you open the mouth to exhale, soften that. As you inhale, flex the feet, squeeze the glutes, draw the belly in, make fist, tighten the muscles of the arms, shrug up the shoulders, purse the lips, squeeze the eyes, hold the breath at the top. Open the mouth, exhale, soften everything down. One more time. So as you inhale, tighten everything in the body from the feet to the crown of the head. Hold it. Sip in a little more, and a little more, and then as you open the mouth and exhale, soften the body. One more deep breath in, one more big open mouth exhale. Go side to side with your head a little bit until you find that sweet spot. Press your shoulders down, raise your eyebrows up. As you soften, imagine the brows dropping down towards the temples. Open the jaw wide, maybe even shift the lower jaw side to side. Let it close. Big breath into the chest. Exhale. Big breath into the ribs. Exhale. Big breath into the belly. Exhale. Spread the fingers out. Let them soften. Rock the hips side to side. Maybe scoop the tailbone under a little bit. Wiggle out your toes. Roll your feet in and out a couple of times. Let the weight of your body sink into your mat. I encourage you to stay here for five to 10 minutes for your Shavasana. If you need to get up and get on with the rest of your day, by all means, feel free. I'm grateful and honored to have uh, shared this time and space with you today in your practice. Namaste.